Welcome. This video is to demonstrate the first model we make in Inventor in S1 Design Technology. The video will be of making a dice and the aim is to introduce the extrude feature to the pupils. We start by clicking the new button. When the pop-up window opens up, we want to select metric, standard millimeters and the create button. So to demonstrate, we're going to make a simple cube. To start with, we're going to go up to the top left corner and select the pencil. This shows three bits of paper. We can then select one. When it faces round to you, we can then draw a 2D shape. In this case, we use the rectangle tool to draw a square. Once we're done, we can hit the green tick. This allows us to then Use the 3D features in the top corner, in this case extrude, to stretch up a shape to make the cube. Now at this stage, I would encourage the pupils to try out three different things with the mouse. We want to do zooming, panning and rotating. To begin with, we can use the middle mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. We can then do panning by holding down the middle mouse button, that's a scroll ball, and moving the mouse round. And we can do rotating by holding down the shift key, the middle mouse button and moving the mouse round. You can do all these on the right hand side as well. We can click on different parts of the square or the corners to rotate it round. On this toolbar here, we can use the hand tool, which allows us to pan the object round. The next button down, we can use something called zoom all. That will bring all the objects into view on the screen. For example, if I zoom out just now and then click the zoom all button, it brings the cube back in. And the one below is a rotate button. Now that allows you to rotate in any direction. Although if I bring my mouse to the side and you see the circle shape, it allows us to then rotate in, a, in one surface, one direction there. So what we're going to do next is delete this cube so we can show you how to make the dice. So I'm going to start like before by going up to the pencil to draw. Now what we've got here, I'm going to call bits of paper, but they're known as work planes. We've got one that goes on the tabletop, one that stands vertical facing the front, and one that stands vertical facing to the side. For the dice, we want to click on the top surface one. That turns the paper around to face us. And we're then going to draw a 2D shape. I'm just going to zoom out a bit and bring it down for some space. The 2D shape we want to draw is a square, so I'm going to use a rectangle tool. But the main thing is we're going to use some sizes this time. So once I'm drawing the shape, I can type in the sizes. I'm going to make it 100 by 100 millimeters. If I click the zoom all button, you'll be able to see the shape there. I can then click the green tick to finish off the shape. I can then zoom back out, bring it down a little bit, and then use the 3D feature button. We use extrude 99% of the time, and we're going to extrude that square shape up by 100 millimeters to make the 3D cube. And then I'm going to turn that cube into a dice. The next thing we need to learn is we're not going to draw on paper all the time. So we're going to click the pencil this time and click the top surface of the model. On the top surface, we go through the same steps. We're going to draw a 2D shape. We're going to use circles to represent the number. So I'm going to draw a circle anywhere and then use the dimension tool to make the circle size 20 millimeters. We then want to position the circle and we can use the dimension tool to do that once more. So I can select the circle and then outside edge and I can make that size 50, which is half of 100 to put it into the center. I can then do the exact same in another direction, select the circle, select the top edge and make it 50 once more. What that does is position the circle right in the center. I can then use a green tick to see I'm finished drawing. Now all we've done is really draw a circle on the edge of the, the cube. We need to use the 3D features in this case extrude once more, to make it stand out. So we're going to indent this in the way. If I select the circle, it makes the uh, extrudes up the way. We want to basically be, make it go in by five. So we can change it to five there. As you can see, the direction is going the wrong way. So I can make it go down the way and select the cut button or subtract. And if I hit OK, it cuts the circle into the top shape of the cube to represent number one. Do the exact same thing for number two. So click the pencil, select the edge of the, the model this time we're going to draw two circles and make them 20 millimetres. So we select the dimension button and we can make them 20 millimetres in size. I 
Again, we want to position them so we can use a circle in the top edge. And this time we're going to make it 25 millimeters away from the top and 25 millimeters away from the left hand side. You can do the same thing with the other circle. So again, select the circle on the outside edge, and make it 25 and the same at the bottom. Once we finish drawing, we can click the green tick. Again, to make it 3D, we use the extrude button, select both circles, make them go in the way by five, and select the cut or subtract button. Do number three as well. So again, pencil, select the edge. I'm going to draw three circles this time at 20 millimeters in size. Again, we can use the dimension tool to position them. So the circles nearest the corners will be 25 millimeters in from the edge. And a circle in the centre will be 50 millimetres in from the bottom edge and the side. Once you've added all the sizes on, we can click the green tick once more to say we're finished drawing. And then use the extrude button. Our tool should say once more to extrude all three circles this time in the way by five to represent number three. Now, the rule with dice is the opposite numbers add up to seven. So on the bottom surface, we're going to draw number six. Again, the circles will be 25 and we're going to use either 25 or 50 to position the circles in place. Once you've got all the numbers drawn in place, making sure opposite sides add up to seven. I'm just going to rotate it around so you can see my sides here. We can then make a bit better dice for rolling. At the moment it won't roll that well, so let's use the fillet tool, which means round, to make the edges a bit rounder. So for the outer edges, we're going to make them size 10, 10 millimeters, and we can select all the outside edges. I would like to, to fill it by 10 or round by 10 like so. We can also rotate round to get the edges on the opposite side. And if I hit I OK or Apply, you'll see we've got it nicely rounded. Now what you also might want to do is to actually fill it, so round the, the numbers. So again we can select the Fillet tool, let's go a smaller size this time, let's go 2 millimetres. And we can select all the edges that we'd like to fill it by two millimeters. Just like so. Again, you could do this if you wish. It can be quite time consuming to do all the numbers. There we are. Let's go back in 3D, just click the corner of the box. Okay, so what we might want to do next is add some colour. To do colour, we want to click on Tools and then click on the Appearance button. This will bring up a pop-up window. In that, we've got the Materials Library with lots of options. The basic idea is we want to select a material and put it on the top line 
just where I've got the black here just now. And we can then, let's maybe choose a red, I think, to go with that. So we click there to put it on that top line. Anything on the top line can get added to the model. All you do is select the surface you want to colour, right click on the material, go assign to selection, and it will colour that surface that colour. Okay, let's add some more materials to make it look nice. Um, what we can do is, I may need to zoom in for this a little bit so we can see the surfaces better, but let's select all these surfaces here and colour them red. Again, right click assign to selection, a bit contrast, let's colour these parts of the circles black. Oh, miss one here, let's colour that red. There we go. And we can go around the rest of the object, applying colour in the exact same way. And we have a finished ice. Thank you for watching.